just going to, I'm going to drop kick him, but I get so many questions. How do you, you know, how do we, how did you get to work at Microsoft? Uh, we don't have a lot of big tech people working in Fort Wayne. So thus the session. This is really designed to help us all realize that this stuff is hard, you know, working at a big tech company or wherever your whatever company is on the pedestal for you, that it's it's hard to work there. Uh, it's hard to get a job there. Jobs in general are hard to get. I know a lot of people going through the process right now or are constantly going through the process of looking for that next phase, that next promotion, that next job. And if it was easy, we'd all be done, right? Um, so some personal career tips. Uh, I've been on a hiring committee at multiple organizations, uh, Microsoft included, and uh, I'll add some of their some of those comments there at the end of the uh, end of the slide deck. And uh, yeah, this talk is uh, uh, my students bullying me into giving this talk. So uh, as well as working at Microsoft, I am a professor at Indiana Tech and a coach of the Indiana Tech Cyber Warriors team. And uh, I've given this talk to them a few times. They thought it was very helpful and uh, they bullied me into uh, giving this talk. Lastly, it's a uh, group commiseration through misery, right? Again, so this stuff is kind of hard and uh, we're just gonna talk about that. So what this talk is not, how to get a job at Microsoft, sorry, Jeremy, um, and uh, a one size fits all prescriptive guidance on, on how to go through this process, okay? So who am I? Um, they always say to sort of say who you are, what you do. Um, been in the tech industry a little while, a few certs here and there, um, worked for a couple different companies across the industry, things like that. Um, if you want to look me up and see whether or not I'm actually worth listening to, there's my link tree. You can scan the QR code real quick. Um, but like I was introduced, I am a cloud solutions architect at Microsoft because it's not yet an HR title. I'm, I haven't changed it yet, but I'm actually a program architect, which means I function as sort of the you know what a vCSO is, virtual CISO? Um, I'm sort of a V chief architect um, for Fortune 50 companies, particularly in health and life sciences. So that's my role at Microsoft. And then focusing primarily on infrastructure and security, but I do security encompasses everything, right? So across the board. So while through my process of getting, becoming employed at Microsoft, um, there's been other big tech companies and other companies that I've wanted to work for and had offers at. Uh, Microsoft has always been that pedestal for me, pretty much my entire career, even before my career started. Um, back when it's not even on the timeline slide that I'm going to show here, but back when I did my A plus, when I started my first A plus training in 2005 or six or something like that, uh, my one of my security questions was for my password. Here you go, try to hack my password. Uh, the security password, the, the security question was, um, what's your dream job? And I just said Microsoft. Um, I don't know why I said that, but I think, I think it was a little forward looking there. So I'm going to focus particularly on my path to Microsoft. I do have an hour version of this talk that I've condensed down into 30 minutes. Um, so I'm going to focus primarily on Microsoft. <clears throat> so career timeline. There's other stuff that's happened as well, but just generally looking at, uh, in, as at the progression, um, I started self-employed doing literally door to door in Arlington Park. Um, Hi, does your computer need fixed? Um, a plus sort of stuff. Um, ran a few companies, uh, very, very small organizations, did some stuff there. Started working at Indiana Tech, where I still uh, am a part time professor and coach. Worked at an uh, organization called Morpho Trust USA, now Idemia. Did a whole bunch of different stuff there. I worked for CompTIA for a while on the Global Advisory Committee and was a subject matter expert for a few certs. Started at Microsoft in 2018 and then have since done some employment work with IC Squared and Pact Publishing. So the educational timeline and all this will, will sort of make a little bit more sense here when I get into the process. Everyone's going to ask me at the end of the presentation, what about certs? I'm positive. And everyone always asks, what about certs? What about uh, degrees? What, how do I, what's the best way to get a job? So I'll just sort of lay this out. 
Um, my first certification was in 2007 when I got the A plus finally. And uh, as soon as that was over, I put up on my board, on my wall, um, all of the MC, the, what was it back then? The MC ITP Pro, Enterprise Pro. Um, I put up all the certs, I printed them out and I put them on my wall. And it was like my vision board was just certs. Um, so pushed it from there. Uh, I got my MCSE uh, before I graduated, RIP MCSE. Um, did a whole bunch of stuff since then. Bunch of certs in between 24, uh, 2014, 2021. Graduated Indiana Tech, undergrad, couple masters. And then uh, if we have time later, we'll talk about the dropout from the PhD program. <clears throat> so the journey to Microsoft. So it started in 2012 with <laughs> a bunch of applications. If you recall, I graduated with my undergrad in 2014. So 2012, when I was a sophomore, I started with uh, the applications there. Um, turns out Indiana Tech is not quite the ring knocker school that uh, I was sold it on being, which still is an amazing school. You should come there, you should send, send anybody who's gonna go to a cybersecurity program, you should go to Indiana Tech. Uh, but it turns out we're not MIT, which was super weird to find out. Um, admissions lies. Um, but it's challenging in the big tech world when you're talking about coasts. Anywhere close, the proximity to water just increases the, the, the challenge for the role, right? Um, so that got really hard. I figured that out really fast. So I ended up chasing down some of the recruiting teams going to other schools. So um, schools like Purdue will have uh, engineering roundtables where they have all these different people that will show up and they say, um, come work for us, please. We're begging you to come work for us. Uh, that didn't really happen at Indiana Tech. So I would drive to other schools, <laughs> buy a shirt in the gift shop and then walk around and uh, hand out my resume and just omit the school name from the resume. I was just saying I'm going to graduate in 24. I wasn't lying. I was just saying I'm going to graduate in 2014 with, you know, network engineering um, degree. I uh, went to uh, Purdue. I did went to IU. I went to um, University of Illinois, um, went up to Ann Arbor, uh, and uh, I started seeing the same recruiters. So you got to make sure that you hit different ones at the different at the tables, uh, which was a little challenging. But uh, you got to do what you got to do to to get noticed, right? It's a hard thing to get noticed. So I started doing a little bit of OSINT on the recruiters because I wasn't really getting anywhere. <clears throat> um, I, I don't recommend this just for legal purposes. I do not recommend this. Um, we're a little bit less uh, focused on personal security uh, 10 years ago. So I was able to get a cell phone number of one of the recruiters. Again, please do not do this. I'm just telling you what I did. Um, and started using some of that information. Uh, so I applied more than 50 times. If you've ever been through one application at a large organization, it's like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> you upload your resume after you tailor it, right? Because it all has to be tailored to the role. And then you put all of the same information in again and tell them the last 47 places you've lived and all that sort of fun stuff. Do that 50 times and uh, it's just, it's not a good time. So leverage some connections that I've made. Uh, the LinkedIn, Twitter, recruiter's phone number, literally go to LinkedIn, go to Twitter and just look up Microsoft recruiter and just follow all of them and connect with all of them and just start at mentioning them in posts. Um, probably not the best idea, but you know, I need, again, needed to talk to somebody. Um, finally got the recruiter's phone number and called them up. You're like, hey, um, I saw you at this, I think it was University of Illinois, um, the, uh, the round table and um, I wanted to follow up. They didn't actually know that they weren't supposed to, I wasn't really supposed to be calling them. They thought I gave them my information or they gave me their information. Uh, but we ended up talking on the phone and uh, that didn't quite go as well as I planned. Um, but eventually I got a call back in 2013. So amazing, I was so excited to get my first call back in Microsoft. Maybe through four rounds of phone screens, which is obscene, um, but um, phone screens and Skype calls made it to the final round. Uh, final round was on site. 
before I go to that final round, make sure to do a lot of open source uh, OSINT on the company. So have the most recent headlines from the news memorized, um, have quotes that your executives have made in line with the pitch for myself. Um, so if you say like, why would you wanna work here? Quote um, Satya Nadella or somebody like that and say, when this is really aligns with what I'm doing, it's so cheesy, but it works every time. Um, so quick tip there, always uh, do some OSINT on the employer that you're gonna go interview for. And uh, if they feel like you're buddy buddy, you can ingratiate yourself a lot easier. I don't have quite time for the dinner story here yet, um, but uh, afterwards I can I can talk about it here. But I was flying out to Microsoft for the first time. Um, this is not to say, this sounds very pompous to say that I was the most technical person there, um, but a lot of these people were there just because they went to the big schools. Again, this talk, journey of big tech from a small town. We don't have the big school name coming from Fort Wayne, right? You can technically say you came from Purdue or IU, um, it gets a little fishy when you get into the details, right? Um, but those people were, they, they had that run, going for them already. We, we, we don't really have that going for us from this sort of, this part of the town, this part of the world. I was not made an offer. <clears throat> so first time all the way through, not made an offer. Has anybody ever gone through, so that would be uh, four screening rounds plus flying out on a three-day trip um, and waiting two weeks with an additional call from HR and then not being made the offer. Yeah, it's not fun. It is not fun at all. That It, it is absolutely crushing. So a super bummed, <clears throat> you know, took two weeks off, started applying again. Those two weeks, you go through the uh, the stages of grieving. You're like, wow, I put a lot of time and effort into this and, and this, this sucks. Um, and you start applying again. Okay, we'll keep going. Made some new connections, um, worked towards making connections three to four times a week. So almost once a day, I set apart time where I was just trying to connect with people, making the connections, having myself be back of mind for at least somebody who mattered or somebody who could make a decision, right? Second call back, December, 2013. Got another call back, finally. Um, I tried to go back and look at how many times I applied in between here. I don't remember how many it was. I'm, I, I think it was about 30 or 40 additional applications. This was to Microsoft specifically, not including the other ones. So we got another callback. Four rounds of phone screens and Skype screens made it to the final round. So excited. Booked my flight. Then they called and canceled my flight. And they said, oh, we forgot to mention even though we th we, we've fully qualified you, um, you don't have skills in uh, C-sharp development. I'm like, nope, I do not. I have the farthest thing from a developer you'll ever find. And I'm like, well, even though you were qualified, that's a requirement by HR for this job. So we're gonna have to cancel that. That sucked. They took my application, they pushed it into another pod. I waited a while, that pod, made a call, said, hey, we're gonna start this process. Full rounds of screens, phone and Skype, made it to the final round. Again, hopefully this time I actually get to get on the plane. Flown out to Microsoft, again, by far the most technical person. Um, there, was, there was a speaker at the dinner that they brought us to, um, and they were talking about one of the people that had been through the college hiring program that after five years had finally accomplished an MCSA. And they were the, crowning achievement and i'm like i already have two mcses this is weird um keep note of that for later at the end of the end of the talk i'll talk about some of that <clears throat> was not offered a position that first time i was flown out to fargo which wow fargo let me tell you um when they tell you uh buy a snowmobile and then don't laugh it off it's like okay maybe i made the wrong choice um second time was to charlotte um again flown home whole month and a half long process of screens not offered position again <clears throat> obviously very upset this is a lot of work 
very upset. Decided to apply to Google. Made it through the screens. I was flown out. Oops. I wish I could erase that part from my life, too. Um, <laughs> got the job offer, turned it down. Uh, was not a big fan of Google. Uh, that was just my personal preference. Um, I don't really want to share an apartment with 19 other people or live in a box truck um, to go work at Google. So it didn't, uh, didn't quite work out. Started applying to Microsoft again. We're like years into this process now. So if, if a couple weeks or a couple months is hard, I'm not saying that my fish is bigger, but my fish was a little bit probably bigger. <clears throat> Third, technically fourth callback acquired if you count the, uh, the shift after I made it through. Um, February 2014, so we're, we're a good two and a half years into the process at this point. Made it through all the screens. Again, at this point, I'm just like, I'm certified in Microsoft interviewing at this point. I'm, I've gone, I know all the questions. It's like, let's just get to, let's get to dessert, right? Um, made it to a remote final round for this one. Didn't get an offer again. The remote final round was uh, that everyone was out of Redmond, um, which if you didn't know is Microsoft uh, Washington. Microsoft comma Washington, basically. There's some other things that happen in Redmond, but it's pretty much Microsoft. Didn't get an offer. <clears throat> Again, was crushed. How do you go through this many interviews and get to the final round this many times and still get crushed? I gave up for the time being. I'm like, this is obviously not going my way. I, I've got to I've got to rethink some things here. How why do I keep getting to the final round and then not making it through? I mean, I'm talking like you show up to the final round. I got laminated paper showing them my Hyper-V distributed setup I've got in my lab with SCVMM and SCOM and Config Man and and they're just everyone was overly impressed. And then they asked me one little question about development and just right out the window. They're like, you do this whiteboarded coding thing. I'm like, let's instead talk about packet flows. Uh, did, not, did not go well. <clears throat> and I feel like every time that was it. So I sat down one night, I said, all right, Microsoft's not gonna work out. Brewed a whole pot of coffee. I remember this day very well. I literally printed out the list of Fortune 100 and I applied to every applicable position. This is the shotgun effect my friends, every applicable position at Fortune 100 literally crossed the companies off the list as I went down. Um, cankers in my mouth from that much coffee. I, I just, again, remember that from that, that was an insane night slash day. It took a long time, I'll tell you. By April 2014, I'd applied to about 500 jobs, um, a bunch of callbacks, and the company I was with at the time um, had offered me a full-time position. I was already an intern there. I had been an intern there for a while. Uh, I was doing some really cool work there. They were giving me way more permissions than I should have as an intern, um, which was super fun. And uh, I just decided to take the full-time position there, which was like 20% more than what Google had offered me. So I told my wife at the time, I said, I will work at Microsoft. And she said, I know, I know. She was there for the pot of coffee, so she knows. So this is important. I made almost every career decision for a span of almost eight years strategically to pave the road to Microsoft. This is not something you have to do, but it's something that I found is, is useful if you are aiming for something, if you are wanting to achieve something, it doesn't just happen. You don't just say, I'm going to go get a cert and then people will hire me. That's everybody gets certs. There's brain dumps everywhere. There's, you, you, there's all these different things that you have to have working for you in your personal portfolio of a technical and non-technical individual that drives you for towards those positions. Very strategic about every decision that I made. Continue to build my network. This is people network, also technical network too, but um, people networking, skills, experiences, took a lot of risks in my career, a lot of risks uh, that 
in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't have a family to support at the time and my wife could support herself with her salary. Um, a lot of risks. <clears throat> so I started applying to Microsoft again, a few dozen times. We're, we're up to 2017 now. Remember this started 2012. 2017, nothing came of it. 2018, things weren't coming of it. No callbacks, every screen said, are you willing to move to XYZ metropolitan city? No, I'm not. I've got, I have my family reasons and my personal reasons why I'm staying here in Fort Wayne. Um, not willing to move to a big metro. And that was, that was like the end of the screen for most people. And there's some good news about this, by the way. Um, <laughs> Google called back, offered me another position. I turned it down. Meh, Google. Um, if nothing else, you guys should all go work for Google because they're apparently a lot easier to get a job at. Um, I created a new organization within my company. This links back to the being strategic and all the decisions that I made. New, made a new organization in my company, positioned myself for a career at Microsoft. I created the cloud organization at my company, ended up being the uh, global director of cloud and chief architect of cloud across the entire organization and all the acquisitions. Got a reference, there's a whole story here. Um, applied to a role in Chicago, um, talked to my wife about it. She said she'd be okay with me commuting um, two to three days a week. Uh, that was going to be quite a thing, um, but we were willing to give it a shot and see how it went. Another long story, drinks later. Um, twisted the arm of contact of mine to find the hiring manager of the role because that's not publicly available. Um, <clears throat> connected with them. And uh, just so happened to mention the role that he was hiring for. Oh, hey, by the way, I heard you're hiring. Um, I, I happen to apply. Here's my ID number. Candidate ID 143722, right? Um, fifth callback, May 2018. We are six and a half years into this process now. First screen complete. Um, told I wasn't being moved forward to the role. Like, you got to be kidding me. Seriously? Two weeks later, they reached out and said there was a second position on another team. Started the interviews for, again, this is part of the hour long talk, but uh, started interviews for another position at Connection, which used to be PC Connection. Um, <laughs> the text screen for Microsoft lasted five minutes and the guy's like, can we just, can we just call this please? Obviously let's, let's just get this over with. Have you done this before? I'm like, yeah, once or twice. <laughs> um, so <laughs> he's like, yeah, fine. Let's just move through with you. Made it to final rounds. There's a whole interesting story about timing between the connection jobs and, and all this other stuff. Um, I went out to Chicago office, literally they called me on a Thursday night and like, hey, we're doing interviews tomorrow in Chicago. Do you want to come out? I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? I assumed I wasn't going to get it, but I'd never been to the Chicago office, so I assumed they had snacks or something. Um, <laughs> I just went out there and just, it was a cool office. It really is a nice office. Everyone was in suits and suit, including somebody that was hired at the same time. That's now a really good buddy of mine at Microsoft. Um, I was in jeans and t-shirt um, in an open button down, wasn't even tucked in. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to get the job. I mean, with that history, obviously you're not going to get the job, right? Um, the final interview that day was with my initial hiring manager. Um, I actually gave him requirements of hiring me because at this point I'm just I'm just so done right I'm like I'm going to work in Fort Wayne I have family reasons why I'm going to work here I'm not traveling more than 25 percent I'm not moving anywhere and I had this other connection job I want 20 percent more than that obviously he's not going to hire me um fifth seven years seven and a half years over 50 actual interviews three times being brought on site for final rounds plus the one remote site for final rounds Offer made in July 2018, started a new role October 2018, and uh, this will be my five-year anniversary um, coming up this year. Whew. Like I said on the first, second slide there, um, group commiseration through misery, right? We all have been through maybe not quite as in-depth in process as that, um, but it's hard, and, and I hope you know that it's hard. I have students right now that are going through this process and I need them to know, front row people, that it is hard. It's a hard thing to do. So here's some lessons learned. <clears throat> don't, be, don't wait to be amazing at your job. 
If you work at, I'm not even going to reference a company because it doesn't matter. Insert company that you think it would be funny to be a really good technical person at here. Um, do it. Be an amazing support analyst, help desk, sysadmin, engineer, whatever it is. Be amazing at your job and drive towards that. If you think that you're just going to eventually stumble on a position, then I hope that happens for you. Um, for me, it did not happen. I had to work really hard for that. So don't, don't wait to be amazing in your role. You all have roles right now where you can crush it. And you, you all know that you can do a little bit better, right? A little bit better that we can do, especially if you work remotely. Um, <laughs> be strategic. Make the decisions in your career that are going to set you up for what you want to do. If you want to be a pen tester, then do something in your help desk role that aligns to security. Find some security flaw in some process and document it. If you can write about it publicly, then do that publicly. Create notoriety for yourself in the space that you want to be in eventually. At Microsoft, there is a rule that you can't be promoted unless you're already doing the job into which you will be promoted, which is a little weird. Um, but they don't offer promotion as incentive. They offer it as a reward. Um, and I think that is something interesting that we can all use if we're thinking about our careers in that way. We're, off, we're thinking about that next step as a reward for something you've already done. It allows us to be less complacent. Overqualification is unfortunately real. Um, the recruiter that actually took me to two of my on-sites and called me twice. I, bill, I still have both of his voicemails saved, by the way. I recorded them and, uh, from my phone and I saved those voicemails. It says, we're not gonna hire you. Every now and then I would listen to him and just get pissed off and like go apply to like 30 new jobs. Um, <clears throat> turns out I had too much experience. There was an HR qualification that didn't come into play until the offer um, portal said, you're gonna make this person an offer. How much experience do they have? College hire more than two, Nicks. That was it. That was it. Doesn't that suck? Um, but overqualification can be real. So back to being strategic. If you're going to make some risky moves and be strategic, remember that all overqualification can happen. If you're working, if you're applying to McDonald's with a CISP, like, I mean, you might get the role, but it depends what role in McDonald's. There's actually a really amazing security team at McDonald's. Um, make your milestones. I always tell my students, they say, how do I get a job? I say, go find the job you want, go to the career website that you want, find the role that is the creme de la creme, find that role, look at all the requirements of that role, map them all out, say, okay, this one says I have to have 10 years experience. I have, I have two, I need eight more years. I'm gonna make my milestones of how I'm gonna to get to that point. It says I have to have this cert, I don't have that cert. How am I gonna get there? make achievable milestones or tasks and stories and epics, however you want to break it down, to actually getting to that point. Again, being strategic, to making yourself a qualified person for that role so that that role is a reward for what you've already become. Four pillars of landing a job. I know I'm running out of time here. So traditional education, for whatever reason, is still a requirement. Obviously, come to Indiana Tech, send everybody to Indiana Tech. Traditional education is wonderful. Um, there is a whole case to be made there. Uh, I have this argument with academia and traditional or industry professionals a lot. Uh, I can argue it from both sides. Practical education, certs, training courses, training platforms, experience, um, etc. Experience, if, CTFs, if you want to do those, give those a shot. Any other kinds of competitions, especially as you're younger, internships, projects. One of the things that you can do to make yourself a qualified individual for a role that you're not in yet is do a project about that. Buy a cheap server, go build some stuff, write a blog about it. Hey, I did this thing. Maybe don't bring a laminated copy like a total nerd to an interview, um, but you can talk about that and have it as a portfolio. And someone says, this person obviously has that drive towards that and network as much as you can. few things here, again, running up on time, so I'm going to just sort of breeze through these things. Um, consider, <laughs> consider proximity to water um, whenever you're applying. As that goes up, there, there's a uh, 
you know, the cost, the cost of living for everything goes up. 70, 70 grand in San Francisco is like 35 grand in Fort Wayne. So consider total costs of everything. Do your research. I think this is an entire other topic to discuss. Beware the robot, beware the human. Put those things into uh, your favorite search engine and uh, take a look at what those mean. Um, the last thing I'm gonna add here is a quote by Warren Buffett. <clears throat> Investing yourself is the best investment you can ever make. Absolutely. Be strategic about it. Do everything you can to make yourself a qualified applicant for the role that you want to have. And that role eventually, Lord willing, will be a reward for what you've done. So, that is the end of my talk. I know we're up on time, um, but does anybody have any questions? How does DNS work? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Um, maybe another talk for another time. In C sharp? No. Um, I did not.